investment from them. Are they worth it? Are they worth the investment? And so which ones are right for you? And my name is William Diederich. So a quick in introduction to myself. I've been in IT for over 25 years and had a CIO, CTO, and acting CISO uh, level in mid-cap companies for over 15 years. I have a degree in engineering from the smaller engineering school in Massachusetts uh, and a, a master's degree along with a whole bunch of certifications and that's what we're here to talk about. Uh, I'm sure everybody's heard about CISP, CISM, CISA, the ISOC exams. Does anybody know what an HCISPP is? Healthcare Information Security and Privacy Practitioner. That's an ISC squared certification. It's relatively new, less than 500 certified professionals worldwide. Anybody in insurance? Know what FLMI is? Fellow oh, Life Management Institute. If anybody worked for Nationwide, you probably heard of that. And ATP. Does anybody know what an ATP is? That's a trick question. Now, airline transport pilot. I'm also an ATP. Uh, so what am I going to cover? I'm going to cover a whole bunch of information about security. Honestly, I, commit, I, I uh, made somewhat of a faux pas in that I have a lot of information on the slides. So I'm going to skip over a lot of it, but the decks I understand are available online afterwards. And some, there's some really good information when I was doing the research for this. And so uh, I'll try to hit the high points, but I'm not going to cover all the information on every single slide. So what can you hope to get out of this presentation? Well, a better understanding of security certifications and, and how they play into the market and into your personal career and, uh, uh, and ways that you may be able to enhance uh, where you're trying to get with your security profession. Uh, and what you should get out of this presentation is that security certifications are a critical component of being a professional today, honestly. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Most importantly, I know there are a lot of presentations here that are heavy technical and lots of information that can make your head spin. This presentation is going to be light and lively. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them as we're going through. And I, I left, I'm going to leave time at the very end to uh, have a Q&A session as well. Caveat emptor, fire beware, uh, you know, your mileage may vary uh, when it comes to certifications. Uh, and, a, and a disclaimer, I'm not associated with any organization that offers certifications. I'm not pushing any certifications on anybody. I am just conveying the information and you can glean from it what suits your, your uh, needs. So types of certifications, all different types of certifications, like company certifications that are required for a specific position. For example, in order to become an enterprise security manager, you must complete this course. Or it could be a vendor-based certification. I'm going to talk about that because vendors, vendor certifications play a role. And uh, there are professional certifications, such as a professional engineer or registered nurse, that you're required by code or statute to have these Certification. You can't get the job unless you have them. That's, that's certainly not absolutely necessary in cert security certifications, um, especially in the gap of how many uh, security professionals are, are needed today. Uh, it used to be yeah, you must have a CISSP or require, what have you. Now it's more like, well, must be working on it or would be nice to have it, and we'll talk about that. And then for security certifications and organizations, there are a whole bunch of them. This, you know, this isn't the entire list. These are the ones that I glean that I think are some of the more popular ones. There are a number of esoteric ones. I didn't mention Black Hat. That's, that's another organization. Uh, but these are, and of course, ISSA. I had, I had to put that at the top since this is an ISSA conference. Okay, so I mentioned I've I'm a pilot. I actually am a uh, Gulfstream G2G3 qualified ATP. And so I know what it takes to do that. So how tough can it be to get a security certification? Well, honestly, not as tough and a lot less expensive, I can tell you. If you have a, if you want to be a pilot, because pilots are in demand, it'll cost you about $150,000. Um, but you can get an InfoSec certifi certification uh, for a lot less money 
And honestly, security profession pays more than pilots in, in many cases. So, yep, pilots are in demand. Oh, okay, we're not going to talk about flying anymore. What we are going to talk about is um, information security, cybersecurity, and information assurance certifications. And I have a lot of data, again, um, that I'm going to go over. And, and uh, that's probably the most pertinent stuff. So, uh, but obviously, jobs in cybersecurity are, are in high demand. And uh, the, the industry is red hot uh, for talent. And there's a whole bunch of information and statistics. I, I pulled this one out. Uh, close to 50% of organizations are short on security staff. Uh, a third are unable to fill positions, yet 80% or more feel that they'll be uh, vulnerable to an attack in, in the next year. Uh, just the demand from 2012 to 2022 is forecast to grow by almost 40%. And just between 2007 and 2013, security, cybersecurity jobs rose almost 75% with the average senior security analyst pay in six figures. And unfortunately, uh, we're really not preparing our younger generation to go into a cybersecurity uh, role. And this is interesting for me personally because I've had a number of discussions with my associates recently. And in addition, uh, I'm a member of the SMBA, which is the IC Squared organization here. Is anybody a member of the IC Squared? SBA. We just talked about it last month. How we have uh, money that we can uh, use for grants for college students or scholarships um, and to start high school programs. So uh, that's something that really uh, is going to be important. The stat on this swim lane uh, article that I found most interesting is that uh, this is from 2015. Okay, so last year, but there's forecast to be a shortage of 2 million cybersecurity uh, job, jobs uh, uh, worldwide uh, by 2017. So, say by 2018. So, what's today's landscape? I'm sure you've heard this in other presentations. Uh, two of them that were interesting to me were the Nissan Leaf. I'm kind of a contrarian. So, when gasoline prices are low, I figure that's the time to buy the the uh, green car because nobody's going to want them. And in fact, they are pretty cheap right now. Uh, so I was looking to buy one, and then an associate gave me an article about how in Norway they hacked into a car using the VIN. So you basically, anybody in the world, you can pull up this app, put, a, put in any VIN, and control the vehicle from the comfort of your own bedroom. Uh, so I said, the lease out. Maybe I'll wait for you know, an electronic uh, a, a BMW uh, uh, electric car. Anyway, uh, Sony, anybody see the 60 Minutes expose on, on the Sony hack? No, nobody here? If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. You can go out online and see it. There are two interesting points in that interview with two different individuals. One, the question was, how many people are there in the world today? And this was a year ago or more. How many people are, in, are there in the world today that could pull off a hack like the Sony hack? And the guy said, well... And the interviewer said, well, maybe, what, a couple hundred? And he says, well, probably three to 5,000. Wow, a lot of people. And then they, he asked the question of another gentleman. He said, how many companies are as exposed to a hack like Sony had experienced um, in the world? And, and the guy said, well, probably 90% of the companies in the world are as exposed to a similar hack to the one that Sony experienced. So, I mean, and, and think about that. Now it's probably five or 10,000 people could pull off that same hack. So, obviously, there's a huge demand for security professionals. Just in 2016 alone, almost 5,000, uh, sorry, 48 breaches have been made public. 48 breaches, those are just the ones that have been made public. Who knows? There could be 500 or 5,000 that haven't been made public. 300,000 records, and those of those 50 breaches, Many of them had unknown as the number of records that were breached. And some examples, recently Hollywood Presbyterian, which was a, uh, a ransom that was paid. Uh, my favorite was Kiki Pants. 
I don't know, I had to actually look that up. It's, it's children's clothing, which, you know, it's really kind of sad. I mean, you, you go out, you want to get some clothing for, you, for your children, and not, before you know it, your credit card information is stolen. So over the past 10 years, this, I use all my sources are referenced here, and uh, I got approval for any of the information. I got to put that disclaimer in there. I, uh, so I have a lot of information that, that uh, I'll cover. Anyway, this one was from Privacy Rights Org. You can go out and look it out yourself. Uh, close to a billion records were breached in the last 10 years from 5,000 breaches. And again, those are only the ones that have been made public. So how important are cert security certifications? Does anybody have a certification today? So quite a few folks already. Um, of those that, that don't, are you working on one now, or are you contemplating getting one in the next year? Okay. All right, well, we'll talk about that. Certification training experience are the, the top three most important characteristics when uh, you're being considered for advanced positions, and they help establish you. Employees with certifications can earn more, they get more responsibility, and have more opportunities for advancement. Okay. This is what everybody wants to see. It's a little bit of an eye chart. I have one that's a little worse, but... Okay, so in 2015, this is from Global Knowledge, uh, and again, I, I contacted the person that had this and gave me approval to display this. Um, I think, interestingly, these are the top 15 paying certifications for 2015. Of them, six were in six figures. Of the six, uh, four were in security, and a total of five uh, were in the top 15. Five of the top paying certifications in 2015 were in security. In 2016, you know, really only got better. Of all the top 15 certifications, almost all of them were paying in six figures, with, again, four of the uh, top six were in security, two-thirds of the top security cert uh, top certifications were in security. Um, I pulled this from CIO Magazine, uh, again, average salaries, uh, and you can read these. All of them are in six figures for all these positions. But I think what's most interesting is the increase year over year of, of upwards of 7% when you know, the CPI inflation is, what, 2% or whatever. So an employer's perspective, again, from the CIO magazine, two-thirds of the employers um, use IT certifications to differentiate between people. Yeah. Those, as far as best I know, that's a CIO magazine that that was national. I do have another CIO magazine on, um, that you'll see here in a second that I'm not too sure. Some of the numbers are pretty astronomic. <laughs> they look like more there, like New York or something. But uh, but yeah, that one that I displayed uh, from Global Knowledge that I understood was uh, national. Okay, good question. Uh, so, 72% use IC certifications for certain roles. 60% of the organizations um, use certifications to confirm somebody's experience. And two-thirds of, uh, of the folks consider IT certifications to be very valuable. I think the point here is that there's a substantial increase uh, just in the last five years in reliance on certifications. Another uh, thing, uh, another article here from CIO Magazine's IT certifications that paid the most in 2015. Digital disruption, cybersecurity is right up there. This is the obligatory eye chart that I mentioned to you. Um, and I think the salient points on this one are, first of all, these certifications are almost all technical hands-on. These aren't more managerial like a, a CISA or a C-RISC or a C-Guide or something like that. Uh, these are, are really hands-on technical. But I, I noticed that the web application penetration testing went down. How can that be? And the conclusion that I drew was, well, people were migrating from that to the certified, the GIAC certified pen tester. But the bottom line is you, you see the top numbers, 50% increase there. IT certification premium pay, this is from Foot Partners, their uh, a, a global uh, market research firm that do a whole bunch of data market gathering and 
um, in a number of areas, specifically their uh, information technology. And so the point here is that since 2006, IT certifications have commanded the second highest premium pay with uh, PMP and architecture uh, and process being, being the market leader. But I, through the magic wizardry of me drawing a couple lines there, highly technical linear regression. Um, so your mileage may vary on this one. Uh, it, it could be possible that security certifications <coughs> with the growth in the last four or five years could exceed um, the PMPs and the DITILs and, and uh, TOGAF, things like that. Now this is the this is the other eye chart that I put up that I mentioned. I'm not too sure about this one. I just, eh, I debated whether you even put it in. I my understanding from this article from CIO Magazine by um, Sharon uh, Fiorentine uh, from last year was that they polled a whole bunch of people and then the and then the jobs that paid the most they just listed them. The only interesting observation here, if this data is truly valid, I guess we have to assume it, is that a lead software security engineer compensation was higher than a CISO or CSO role, uh, and that I do, and that that could be possible. That uh, you know, if you're a senior architect, software engineer, you could be commanding some big big bucks these days. So I went out to Indeed. And I said, well, let me take a look and see what the job postings are actually putting up there with respect to security certifications. So I put in information security. I said, give me 50 listings. And then I randomly picked 20 of them or so and put whatever was as far as requirements uh, in on the slide. And there's a whole bunch of them, and I am just going to skip through them all. You can read them at your leisure. Um, the bottom one there, you know, is I think really representative of all of them. Professional certifications such as CISSP, CISM, CSA, CRIS, or other security credentials is preferred. So most of them say preferred. Some of them say required. Um, the bottom line is they're a key component to any of these job postings. So what are some reasons from an employee perspective to get a security certification? You know, it validates your skills from an independent third party. Okay, don't, don't just take my word. I went and I took this comprehensive test and I passed it. Okay. And it differentiates you from other people in the hiring process. It facilitates the ability to command higher pay, which we've been talking about. You know, honestly, from a holistic um, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs perspective, you know, it, it helps you remain competitive and, and enjoy what you're doing. If you know the knowledge better, um, you know, it's going to make your your work environment and, and the work you're doing more enjoyable. And honestly, it can help you get up to speed more quickly. Dedication to career and um, can enable, if you're not, the, the second bullet there, I kind of skipped over that, if you're not in security today, now we're at the InfoSec Summit, so I assume everyone here is in security, but if you were a system admin or a network engineer or maybe a software developer and you wanted to retool and go into security as a focused career, certification is a good way to do that. So from an employer's perspective, um, certification is a quality marker for the employee. Uh, we can gauge the effectiveness of the qualifications of the potential hire. Uh, employers want their hires to stay current and grow their, their skills, so continuing education, and the bottom bullet I put there, investing in security training and certifications can increase employee satisfaction. So, you know, it's a, it's a two-way road there where employees are supporting their IT security professionals and you're getting the certifications which are benefiting the company. So what are some reasons not to get a security? I mean, so far, right? There, big money, opportunities. Why would you not get one? Well, I mean, you shouldn't get a security certification or any certification, <coughs> for that matter. Um, you know, with the expectation that, uh, hey, I'm, I'm going to go back to the boss. I just got my CISP. I want ten percent more pay, or I'm leaving, or something. That's not the right way. You're doing it because you're a professional and you're continually enhancing your capabilities. 
You don't want to do it just for the sake of having a certification. I've actually had people come up to me and say, hey, I think I'm going to get this certification. And they're like, why? You're not doing it. Oh, because I want to. What? I mean, <laughs> why would you invest the time, energy, and money? You know, it's cause, just because I want to. No, I don't think so. And obviously, for any nefarious activities, you don't want to go and get become a certified ethical hacker or uh, get some black hat certifications so that you can go out and hack companies. Not a good idea. And by the way, these associations have codes of conduct and ethics anyway that you're supposed to comply with. So, uh, not good. So how would you choose the right certifications for yourself? You know, what are your goals and objectives? What do you want to accomplish? Is it just about the money? It shouldn't be. But if it is, well, you saw the stats. Get one of those certifications that I mentioned. They're that pay the most money. Um, you know, you should try to align it with what you're trying. You know, it's a long-term <coughs> goal. You have to view it like that. This is not, you know, I've done PCI audits a lot. And uh, executives say, hey, now that we've got that PCI certification, are we done? No, you're not done. It's a continuous improvement, okay? That's just a particular milestone, but tomorrow we've got to go back to, to work again and work hard and making sure that our environment is secure. Do you have a roadmap, okay? If not, you really should have a roadmap anyway in everything you do in life. You know, you can't just think about what am I, what am I going to be doing tomorrow. You have to think, what do I want to accomplish a year from now, two years from now, five years from now? 10 years from now, and then plan your certifications along that. Because quite honestly, there is a, a major, there's two major roads you can take, more of an administrative and a leadership role, and there's certain certifications that lend themselves to that, or more a technical role, all right, um, such as a penetration tester or, or something along those lines, versus a CISO, which is an information systems auditor. And when you do, when about half the people here said they were half certification, so you know. You know, when you're going to take a certification, you know, don't go for the most difficult one that's out there today. You know, go for something that's within your wheelhouse. And, and I'll mention that uh, for myself personally. That was the approach I used. A uh, number of security certifications have only recently become available. Okay. You know. The reality is everybody knows security professionals are in high demand, so there's some new security certifications popping up, it seems like, every month, that they, that, and you've got to ask yourself, gee, you know, does that really make sense to, to uh, go with that? Uh, particularly if they require that you take formal classroom training. Now, when, me personally, when I got my certifications, I did self-study for almost all of them. There was one slight exception. But almost all of them, I did self-study. Because, I, honestly, I was paying for it myself. So I'm not going to pay $5,000 for a CISP boot camp. Sorry. I'm just going to crack the books and get it done. Uh, and some, some are just downright seriously expensive. I'm not going to mention any names. Of but there, there is one certification I know of. That to get it, now I'm not talking about the training to apply for it and pay for the certification, it's thousands of dollars. I mean, I don't know, maybe. You know, it has a high end, high title and everything, you know, but geez, I don't know if it's worth it. So stick with the organizations, the well known organizations, but you know, like I, ISACA that's been around since 1969, or ISC Square, or GAC, CompTIA, SANS. Uh, you know, there's always time down the road if you decide that, well, I want to get a little bit more esoteric certification and, and it's be, become popular. Um, okay, are they expensive? As I mentioned, yeah, you can spend a lot of money, particularly if you're doing formal classroom training. Now, the reality is to get formal classroom training is the quickest way. There's no doubt about it. You go for five days. And they, these companies, they tout a high passing percentage rate, 90% plus or whatever. I don't know if that's true. But, but you know, they, they prepare you to take the test. And, I, you know, if you read the book, you're probably going to get a little bit more out of it than you, you just get jammed down five days worth of training, you take the test, and then you forget it all. So, uh, but if you're in a hurry, you, you can do it. Uh, online training programs are a pretty good idea, too. Uh, they're not as expensive, and you some of them you can watch them when you want, and uh, 
you know, it gives you opportunity to review the material over and over again. And there are, are self-study um, training materials, books, study guides, um, computer-based training and testing, um, and that, that, you know, adds money. There's exam prep test question databases that you can subscribe to, uh, which I do recommend you do. And typically, the exam itself is around $500. After you've done all that, you pass the test, now you actually want to get the certification, you got to pay a little more money. It's a money making thing. <coughs> so you got to spend 50 or or $100 to apply um, to get the certification. And legitimately, they are doing back end vetting. They're not just rubber stamping your certification. So you have to provide attestation of your work experience, et cetera. And I talked about that a little bit. Um, and my favorite, you know, you get the certification. You finally you get the thing back. This is after weeks of waiting, and it's a nice, heavy-duty bond paper with gold embossed seal on it and everything else like that. And they, that's part of your application fee. But if you want the fancy wood grain walnut plaque, you know, with the brass and all engraved and everything, you can, for some certification, I'm not going to mention any names, you can spend another 99 bucks and get your wood plaque. Bottom line is my rule of thumb is I figure it's around $1,000 if you're paying out of pocket. Now, hopefully, your company's paying that, uh, including classroom training on top of it. That, that's based on self-study. That was my experience. It was about $1,000 for me to get $500 for the test and the training material and the, and the exam prep questions, everything else like that. Rule of thumb, if somebody said, hey, you know, you really should get this certification, in my mind, I'm thinking, that's $1,000. So how can you pay for it? Self-funding, obviously, the least desirable. But if you're in a hurry and, you know, your company doesn't pay for it, yeah, you know, you, you can pay for yourself. Maybe it's a tax deduction. Your mileage may vary. Uh, partially funded. I think this is quite popular with companies now. I mean, really, come on. You know, you should be investing in your employees. And 100% company sponsored. Um, I, I also teach a CISSP prep class. And I'm going to be teaching that at one of the companies, no names. Uh, if they're making an investment, they are, pay, they are bringing in uh, myself and other instructors to teach a CISSP prep class for 40 people in their organization. They realize the value of having that certification, and they are paying so that their employees can come in and get the training necessary. Um, <laughs> 15 years ago or so, uh, I was a CIO at a company, and I was pitching to the CEO, hey, we really need to get certifications, you know, for, we, we, we've got to pay for them. And the person actually said, why would we pay for certifications? If they get them, then they'll just leave. Oh, my God. Thankfully, times have changed, and, people, and companies realize the value of certifications, and they're investing in their people. So what, what does it take? Um, <coughs> most of the certifications have minimum experience requirements, two, three, four, five years of experience uh, that you have to have attested, or hours. In the case of PMP, you have to have 4,500 hours. Or, uh, you have to take a comprehensive examination, the CISSP. You know, the CISSP, are there any CISSPs here in the room? Okay, so you know. I, I don't think the CISSP is that tough from a question perspective, but it is a real grind from the number of questions and the time period. You come out of there and your brain is jello. Uh, you're, not, you're basically not functional for a day or two. But, uh, but the questions aren't all that hard. Um, so then uh, you have to apply, as I mentioned, um, and you have to have somebody third party attest. In the case of ISC squared, it has to be another ISC squared person. You can't have your friend Joe or Sally you say, oh, yeah, yeah, she's got the experience. Now, yeah, they, they have to be a CIS, an ISC squared professional certified. Um, and then the rigorous review, that's what the money's for to vet you and the fees. And by the way, after you get these great certifications, there are annual maintenance fees. You can't forget about that. You get five or ten certifications, and you're going to be out a couple grand there every year just renewing them. Okay, so what if I don't meet the requirements of getting the CISSP? Well, in some cases there are, uh, I'm not going to say lesser, but not as comprehensive certifications that you can get like the, in Verizon Square, the SSCP. 
or the CompTIA Security Plus, I think is more, I personally think, you know, you know don't hold me to it, is more, because I didn't take the test, but is more of an entry level certification. Um, some certifications allow you to sit and then get the work experience afterwards, which, you know, isn't a bad idea because if you take the certification, you pass it, you've got the merit badge, you've got the confidence, and then you go in and you show your value, you work, you get the experience, and then they send you the certificate after some amount of time. Um, and there's no penalty for studying the materials, although the materials do typically, ISACA, they change every year. So if you study the materials and you, you plan on taking the test next year or the year after, you, the materials may be outdated. Uh, so vendor certifications may make sense um, because typically they don't have any work experience requirements. So you can get a CCNA and, and by the way, Columbus State has a great program uh, to get a CCNA. It's very reasonably priced and no experience requirements. Just get admitted to the program and it's, uh, I think it's uh, 16 or 32 weeks and uh, you can get your CCNA. If that's the more technical track you're interested in. And of course, alternative to certifications, get the experience as much as you can. Participate in company training programs that you can. Join a local chapter. I mean, I belong to most of those up there. Belong to ISSA, which is a great chapter here in Columbus, obviously with this conference. ISACA, the SMBA, which is ISC squared, OWASP. And attend the meetings. Be part of it. These, the, the SMBA, they cover a lot of good information. I mean, every month, first, first Monday of the month, uh, they, uh, they talk about recent security incidents, and we spent a lot of time talking about the FBI and, and the Apple uh, situation, and got some, some really, I mean, there's some really super genius people that attend these meetings, and uh, it's a great way to learn. Reading. Always a good idea. I mean, continuous improvement. It's just, it's just absolutely necessary. Podcasts, webcasts, vendor demos. Vendor demos, you know, that at the end they're going to try to pitch on their thing, but they could have some good technical information, security information uh, throughout. And college degrees, um, you know, the only thing is a college degree is a significant. You want to get a, a doctorate in information assurance and cybersecurity. That's 50 grand and a three-year commitment. And oh, by the way, you know, it may take you longer and more money. I don't know. Certification is a lot less expensive than I think a better value. And did I happen to mention experience? Obviously, that's extremely important. So you're, you're going to prepare for an or for a certification. Don't kid yourself. It, it is a big investment of time and potentially money. Plan on spending 100 hours. So if you say, oh, gee, I'd like to get my CISSP. I think, I'll, I think I'll study a couple hours a week. Well, okay, it's going to take you a year. And on top of that, it's the kind of thing where if you're spreading it out over a long period, you're taking one step forward, you know, maybe two steps forward, one step back every week. Whereas if you really knuckle down and say, hey, I'm going to get this done quickly. I'm going to spend 10, 15, 20 hours a week. You're going to get it done in a reasonable amount of time. You know, maybe 8 to 10 weeks you'll be able to get your certification. Join a study group. I taught the ISSA uh, physical security class, the CISSP physical security class last night. It's a great program. I think it's like two hundred ninety-five dollars. It's twelve classes of three hours each. You know, a boot camp if you went to a uh, commercial outfit is going to charge you five grand for a similar thing. ISSA is really fantastic, and um, and they they and this prep class is, is a great event. I don't know if it's too late to get in on it now, but. Uh, Lay out a schedule and stick to it. In some cases, like in, in the example of ISACA, they only schedule the exams a couple times a year. You know, once in December, once in June, and they have a subset in September. So they force you. And actually, I am signed up for an ISACA. I've got three of the four. I'm going to take the last one in June. Then I'm sort of certification out. That's it. Um, but that forces you. But, but in other the other exams, like the CISSP, you take those at Pearson View, and whenever you feel like you're ready, you call, and, and you go down and you take the test. Although, when I got my CISSP, I wanted to get it before they changed last year. They changed last year on April 15th or something, so I scheduled the last possible time that you, I could do to take the test, which was April 11th, 
and I knew, hey, I, I don't care what it takes. I, don't, I, I want to get it done by that. But you really have to want it. You just can't say, hey, uh, yeah, I'd like to get my CS pick. Forget it. You're not going to get it. Don't waste your time. You know, don't spend the money. You have to say, I, I absolutely want to get it. This is important to my career. I'm proud of my profession. I want to enhance my skills, and I want to get the certificate that, that shows that. So when you sit for a certification, I, I know this presentation really isn't sitting for a certification, but I, I was thinking about it as, as I was preparing, and I threw these up. You can read these yourself. I mean, you want to make sure you're prepared. Show up early, rested, pace yourself, and be confident in what you're doing. Don't second guess yourself. These certifications, they're theoretical. So don't think, well, in my company, this is how we do this. No, you kind of got to throw that out the window. You have to say, all right, what would the book say? And uh, I think we talked about some of those last night in, in the physical security. Uh, some tests, like the Pearson View ones, you complete the test, and you go and you say, done, you walk out to the front, and there's a person sitting there at, at the desk. They print out a piece of paper, and it, the first sentence says, you either passed or you failed. You know, right then and there, and you either go home and party, or you go, oh boy, I don't want to have to do this again. This is a six hour grind. I got, when I went there to take the CISP, there was another person, and he had not passed it. Um, and these tests literally sometimes have only a 50% pass rate. And he was sitting again, and he was not looking forward to it. Fortunately, I, I did pass. Others can take five to eight weeks to get the results back. So when I got my, I took my CISM first. And uh, I'm going to talk about this a little in my personal example. But I had to wait five weeks to get the results. It was, it was interesting. So, uh, so the one good thing is, if you're taking multiple certifications, if you take one, some of the material starts to become familiar. Uh, again, I mentioned that I took the CISM first, and, and for specific reasons. And I studied... Uh, at least a hundred hours for it. I, well, all right, I'll give you the background. I hadn't taken any certifications for years. Yeah, probably 20 years, 15, 20 years. I was working as a CIO, and I didn't really feel like I needed the certification. But I decided in my career that I wanted to retool and move into consulting, <laughs> and I really enjoyed security, so I'm going to get a security certification. So I wanted to make sure I passed. I really studied hard for that CISM, and I did. I did pass it. I scored top 10% in the world. That's a test that only has a 50% pass rate. But then when I studied for the CISSP, <laughs> uh, I only studied about 60 hours, and literally 40 hours in the, lot, in the two weeks prior. I uh, studied 20 hours. Well, I, that was working full-time, too. I just studied three hours, three, four hours a night. Um, and on the weekends for the two weeks prior, Maybe 60 total for the CISSP. If I was to go up for the CISSP as my first exam, I'd probably put up 120 or 150 hours into it. So that you can build on your knowledge. There is a point of diminishing returns there, though. You don't want to get too many certifications. Never mind the fact that I mentioned that you have to maintain them, which is really expensive if your company isn't reimbursing you. But, uh, you know, you don't want to be a certification hound with all these certifications. There's got to be a purpose for what you're doing. It has to reflect what your capabilities are. You know, the right balance of certifications, no more, no less. For me personally, I'm, I'm there, except for the two <coughs> guys that I signed up for. Oh, so two real-world real world examples. I, I already mentioned mine, why I got mine, my certifications. And by the way, I did complete five certifications in one year from December to December. So you can do it uh, if you don't have certifications or if you're looking to get additional certifications. The money's there, the demand's there, the lack of uh, certificated professionals is there, so uh, you can do it. The other example is a former employee that worked for me. Uh, he was a director of security and um, great guy, really super sharp guy. And I told him, Tell you what, you get your CISP, I'll promote you to vice president, and I'll pay you a lot more money. A lot, a lot more money. All right, that was a condition of his employment. Did he get it? No. If you can't, if you can't believe it. But he was working really hard. 
So I left that company, and that's when I decided that I wanted to get some certifications. So I called them up and I said, you know what? You've been talking about getting it, but I am going to get it, and you're going to get it with me. You're going to be my study partner. We're going to study twice a week for three hours, and on Tuesday and Thursday, we're going to get this. And he said, okay. So he did. So we both took the CISM, scored top 10% in the world. Both took the CISSP at the same time, passed first time. Both took the, the, uh, another ISACA test in June of that year. We both passed and scored top 5% in the world. Hey, things are getting better. Again, with only 50% pass rate. And that exam was administered to about 10,000 people worldwide. Well, a month ago, he got a letter from ISACA. We, we knew we both scored well, top 5%. He, he scored the highest score of anybody in the world, uh, approximately 10,000 people. I told him, hey, it was only because you, you were my study <laughs> <laughs> I helped you get it. <laughs> All right, well, we've got to wrap up here. So um, statistically, are they worth it? Absolutely. The data's there. Read the preso yourself. Higher compensation, more responsibility, better opportunities. Personally, yes, it's a merit badge, something to be proud of. Um, it enables you to contribute more meaningfully, and you, honestly, you're a member of, of a link group. You know, some of these certifications only have a few thousand people that are certified. Bottom line, honestly, if you're not getting certifications, you're falling behind. So, uh, my apologies that I did not leave more time for questions, but if anybody has any questions, or if anybody wants to see me, in, in the beginning of the deck is my email address. Email me. I'm, I'm <coughs> always happy to help folks out. So you're local? I am local. I'm here in Columbus. By the way, I'm, I'm working on a consulting assignment with Tech Systems right now. It's a great company, and I'm working with, and my client is a great client. I'm really excited about it. We're, we're, he's a mover and shaker, and we're going to make some things happen. And Jess Welker's here. If you're looking for new security opportunities, uh, talk with Jess. They're hiring. Okay? Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. I hope you enjoy it.